Welcome to a much more relaxing episode of Final Fantasy XIV, Your First Day, where the only war we have to deal with now is with plants and fish. More than one kind of fish, too. Last time, we finished our dual campaigns to free both Alamigo and Doma from the clutches of Garlemald. This time, we can stop to smell the... desert. And ocean. And maybe make a couple things with our hands. If you aren't grinding your way through all the levels using the Ishgardian Firmament, you're in some luck with Stormblood. Things get a whole lot better from here. Last time, I mentioned a couple points where quests could be done, but we'd come back to in this video. There's even more than what I mentioned. Starting with the Azim Step, we have the easiest quest line. Purple Rain. Do the singular quest, and all requirements will be met for one specific unlock, despite this quest not being blue. Similarly, after finishing Sui Sui of the Violet Tides, Kurenai has a full quest line for you. This entire quest line is required for another unlock, but is not the singular requirement. We'll be back to this in a bit. Something that was blue was back in Namai. We went over that there was two sets of quests that lead to Kurobana vs. Gyorin. Completion of this final quest will unlock something back in Azim. But staying on the idea of blue unlock quests before talking about the biggest effort unlock is Leaves in Kugane. Just by talking to the NPC as a Disciple of Hand or Land over 60, they unlock. Now, after Heavensward Crafting, you may be shy to do any crafting again for leaves. Don't worry though, the awfulness is over. Crafting is good again, provided you have the gear, which we'll talk about that soon. You may also still want your retainers leveled up. Battle retainers, always and forever, will be key to being a good crafter and getting supplies. But for now, note that temple leaves the bigger, 10 leave costing ones are gone. We will never see these again, unless Endwalker brings them back, which I doubt. The other quick unlock is in Relga's Reach. The Gear Abanian branch of Rowena's House of Splendors is here, and accepts all levels of collectibles, not just Stormblood ones. Which again, this is a decent option if you have decent gear, but there are much better options. But to get all those better options, we have to do one big trip back to the main story. We have to help out in Aranvald's big adventure, oh, my name days. and reach the end of 4.1. It's not nearly the trip that 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3 was just to unlock the firmament, but when you reach Tidings from the East, we have a big unlock. For this story progress, we have a new unlock at the Splendors vendors. This is our second custom delivery client, Monago. But that's not all. After unlocking Monago, and only after unlocking Monago, if you did the current eye line of side quests and head to this Kojin with fallen catboys in Kugane, we have a third custom delivery client. The Ruby Princess herself wishes to get our aid, but we're still not done with this. Now for what that Purple Rain quest did. When you reach level 66 on a Crafter or Gatherer, head back to Idleshire. You'll be here a lot for the Miner and Botanist quests if you don't want to travel all the way here on such short notice. But whenever you do come here, we have our fourth custom delivery client. That's right. Three of them, thanks to Stormblood. Our menu is pretty filled out now, and you may have noticed this icon over on the right side in the list of clients. I didn't mention this the first go around with Zloe, since you needed a few weeks to unlock this feature. Everyone except Nago can be glamoured to however you want whenever you reach five hearts. So now we can glamour Zloe how every man wishes she looked. There we go. Perfect. 
But there we go. We have a ton of options now for custom deliveries. I recommend leveling all of them up for options in bonuses. Randomly every week, clients will have bonuses attached to their turn-ins. So with more options, the more chances at bonus and potentially more rewards. The only downside is that you always only have 12 weekly deliveries, even if you have way more than 12 available. But these are weekly tasks, keep in mind. We need something a bit more consistently good. Unfortunately, that's where this dead fish carcass comes in. If the 12 were watching, it would not respond. But it does, and leads us to the Namazu Beast Tribe. The quest leads us to the bird having guy if, for whatever reason, you don't have flight. You can still reach the cliff above and the Aetherite. But you really should have flight by now. You're going to want it for these quests. Either way, the first quest is worth a huge chunk of EXP, and then comes the actual unlock quest being worth even more major EXP. But it gets even better. I'm still in Heaven's Word gear, very bad Heaven's Word gear, but much like the Moogles, the first quest is super easy to do in absolute trash gear. And so are the dailies. But the cool bits of this tribe continue. I can swap over to Miner, abandon the quest, and pick it back up as a Miner for an entirely different quest. Yes, Namazu just isn't a crafting tribe, it's a gatherer tribe too. And once again, even with bad gear, it's still doable. But the Gathering of Stormblood is even easier to get through than the 8 crafting classes if you're going for Omni crafting. So I'll be using the EXP of these quests for crafting. But with that, we begin the tribe for real, and begin the trip to, unfortunately, save the Namazu from extinction. But fortunately for them, their rewards are too good to pass up. Beyond the fact that the EXP is amazing like Moogles, which the EXP alone is enough of a draw, the interesting bit is next door at Kyosho. We can shed our awful Heaven's Word gear for a decent price and even upgrade to 65 gear. If market board prices on your data center for high quality gear are ridiculous, this no quality stuff isn't a bad deal with how otherwise easy Stormblood progression is. Need proof? The class quests. If it wasn't clear already, the Alchemist class quests are the best ones, but this line will prove it with tons of EXP. Though all the Stormblood class quests do this, it will also hand you even more of those EXP buff tokens Heavensward did, and you'll see in the 63 and above quests you'll be given skills too. Now, this first alchemist quest has me giving this Lala a sweet treat. Name days have come a sweet treat? That costs me no materials. Severian himself has the materials I need, and if I fail the craft, he will just give me a new set. In the special section of the log under story, we have the class quest crafts. And again, I did not upgrade my gear at all into Stormblood gear, and I get a 12% for high quality chance, and hit that 12% chance. I one-shot this quest with no material cost besides the crystals, which are super cheap and easy to get. You can just try again and again and again, fail again and again, and then just succeed randomly for free. You don't need to worry about guaranteeing a high quality because you'll lose out on tons of money. Then you just get a big chunk of EXP and free gear anyway. If you have multiple classes progressing through these quests, that means you can get a full set of the crafting gear for all but free. Then do it again at 65 for an even improved set of gear without even buying the Namazu gear. 
all while gaining huge chunks of EXP from the quests, the tribes, and the custom deliveries. Worst comes to worst, you can just set yourself up to craft a bunch of collectibles to turn into Rowena. After the set of 63 quests, you'll have plenty enough gear to be able to competently craft good collectibles and get tons of EXP that way. But then you reach the 70 quest, complete it easily, and go turn it in. And we are left with some kind words from Severian, and nothing more. No warning to come back in Shadowbringers or anything. Just like job quests, class quests are done. And not just the come back after Shadowbringers for a thing like job quests will have. Completely done. We have no reason to come back here to the Alchemist Guild in the future of this series. Say your goodbyes. The only reason this might change is if Endwalker does something different. But remember that we discussed in Heaven's Word that there were master books for new recipes. You may want to get these too, and there are level 70 books too you can now get if you want them. But more importantly is the gear we can buy. The Hand King set. There are a lot of scripts flowing in thanks to custom deliveries every week, and I always recommend getting crafter scripts instead of gatherer scripts with your custom deliveries. You should have absolutely no issue gearing up all eight crafters with no problem using just custom delivery scripts. That is, unless you're trying to bum rush all them to level cap. Then you can at least buy a full set of gear and accessories. Tools find another option. Otherwise, get a full set for Shadowbringers crafting. It's absolutely worth the investment and doesn't cost you tons and tons of gill. If for whatever reason you have too many scripts, you already have a full set of gear, all the tools, throw them at Materia for melding at level 80. Or you could even sell that materia for some gill. Now on to the gatherer side of things. Preempt everything with a new set of gear. Things won't go as smooth as the crafting side. I myself am skipping right to the level 63 set of gear and high quality versions of it. Even this will be nearly the bare minimum, and potentially not even good enough. You will see why soon. But let's check the class quests. Once again, they give you free tickets for massive EXP boosts, and you should easily be able to push through each of these with the new class quests, since you have tons left over from Heaven's Word 2. And these intro quests alone, just like crafters, are entire levels of EXP in themselves. They're push pushing you through the curve, no problem. And just like the crafter quests as well, there are new skills involved, so you want to do these. But let's talk the quests. The first botanist quest wants me to get wild popotos. These are not in the gather log at all, because these only appear during the quest line. If you come here without the quest active, this node will not have Popotos. And take careful note to see how I had a 61% gather chance and no chance to high quality. Yeah, Heaven's Word gear? Not good enough unless you got endgame Ironworks gear. According to preparation, I need a good 142 more perception. One gear upgrade later into the 63 Gyuki set, this is a much more possible to complete quest. The mining and fishing quests are very similar in that aspect. While the Namazu tribe does offer gear, anything less than the high quality Gyuki seems to not be enough. We will see why in the Fisher end, but for all the gatherers, pay particular note to what the NPCs say. For some reason, the quests tend to not say in the journal where you are headed. 
For example, this serpentine location is only said by Rowena when she requests it. The journal does not mention it. But also even that is rough. The 60A botanist quest says to search Rise in Kaikyo, which means the entire ocean. The northwest corner near Isari is where you want to go for the quest. Normally, I'd just mention that the location of the text is not representative of the entire area's boundary, but this one is a bit ridiculous. Then finally, the level 70 quests for Mina and Botanist are both lenient and mean at the same time. They only want you to get 5 of the requested item, and no quality works, but they're unspoiled nodes which means they only spawn at specific times. The mining quest wants us in Rest Rock with the Raw Rodenite node. This is from 8 to 10 in the morning or evening. Botanist has us in the Locks hunting area from 4 to 6, which Jamal Ginger shares. You should only need one node to get all five of the item. Be sure to spend the GP you got stored if nothing else, and you should guarantee a gather. Also, there's a really funny clip of this mining quest being broken. I tried to find it to show, but I can't, so you have to go find it for yourself, so good luck. Ah! These quests are guaranteed to bring you to 71 for sure. And just like crafters, there is no quests after 70. Say goodbye to the guilds. But... Moving on to the long road of Stormblood fishing. Before we worry about anything else, there is a level 61 quest in Tamamezu for spear fishing, an entire new system for fishing that is basically just slower botany and mining, but underwater all the time. We'll get a new offhand item, and this is the only gig in the game. There are no stronger ones. Even at level cap, this new gig is what you will be using. It's a nice boost to GP though, but don't expect to ever get a better one. Also be sure to open your skill window and check in on your new skills, since they don't all get auto added to the hotbar. You have to manually add all spear fishing skills to your hotbar. But the overall system itself is really simple, which is good. Choose your gig, small, medium, or large. The size of the gig is the size of the fish you want to find, but there is plenty of overlap. A large gig can still find one ilm shrimp instead of 100 ilm fish. When you see bubble show up in the node, hit the catch button. If you want to leave the node, use the quit button that had no use until now. And that's really it. But also, even when you level up and get new spear fishing skills, you have to manually place them too. So be very aware of your leveling, or you might miss out on some of your new spear fishing skills. But now on to the class quests themselves. These are worth it for the skills and EXP, just like botany and mining. And just like those, the quest fish only spawn when the quest is active. Luckily, the game pops up special messages to say the fish is in the current node. And again, it will not appear in the fishing log. The tooltips even say the fish is not in the log. For this first quest, I used versatile lures. Yep, this far in, they're still useful. And thankfully, you don't need these to be high quality fish, so both no quality and high quality fish are of use, and you don't need to throw all your GP at patience. When you catch three, use the lower quality feature on any high quality catches you found. Level 65 is an extremely notable level up for Truth of Oceans. We'll talk about this soon, but for now, make sure you keep it around and be ready to learn. For now though, let's talk about the class quest for 65. Reyna is here and the line being cast gives us no message. Flying over to Shoal Rock, the line being cast gives us the message. And again, we have to pay attention to where quest text says to go. But also, 
versatile lawyers just did not work for me here. So I had to go back to Tamamizu and buy myself a stack of 99 live shrimp. I recommend you do too. Honestly. Hey, Reina, stop staring at me. I'm just trying to enjoy the scenery. Come at once. But now on to the 68 quest and that truth of oceans we got. Wobalago mentioned fishing for Ichiosaurs while looking for Defangshi. This is a complex quest and it took everyone a while to get it when it first came out because Truth of Oceans is a mess. So let me go step by step. Step 1. Turn on Truth of Oceans. Make sure it's on or things aren't going to work out for you. Step 2. Go to the Sunken Junk Spearfishing Nodes and use the Large Gig to catch Ichiosaurs. Step 3. To up your catch rate, use Veteran Trade to make unwanted fish go away from the node, such as the Shrimp or the Amber Trout. Step 4. As you collect Ichiosaurs, there will be messages popping up about swimming shadows taking shape. After collecting exactly seven of them, though you can collect more, but seven is the trigger, the swimming shadows will completely have formed. Step five, use the quit button if the node isn't finished and look at the mini map. An unspoiled node has appeared. Head to this and start spear fishing. Step six, swap to the small gig head. The fangshi are small apparently, but it works. If your perception is high enough, the Defangshi are all but guaranteed to be high quality. For me, this was somewhere over 600 perception, but I went to 612 just to be safe. Like I said, high quality Yuki gear alone is not enough. You will need some perception melds to get this high, or some even better perception gear. This quest was meant to be a tutorial. All swimming shadows work similarly to this, and there's no easy way to figure out what and where the conditions are without a lot of work and a lot of spearfishing. Just like normal fishing! Plus some of them are even time-gated, so it's a whole big thing. But then finally, a breather finale. Don't be like me, read the quest text. The quest is in Isari, but the quest fish is in Onokoro waters. Abuse patience too when you can, and you should be able to finish off this quest in a decent amount of time. I used live shrimp for this quest too. All three gatherers end with you getting enhanced GP regen, and that one GP does make a big difference. You wouldn't expect it, but I can never go back to having 5 GP again, after this series is done. It is too good to have the enhanced GP regeneration. But again, there are no new quests after this one. Gatherer class quests are done. We'll see why in Shadowbringers. For now, the end of Stormblood progression for gatherers is a bit more complex than it was with crafters. In Raugr's Reach is this Splendor's Vendor. 50 Hawker's tokens for one folklore book. Strangely, these tokens are under the level 61 trade and not 70, but oh well. 5 scripts per token, or 250 scripts per book. Get these only if you really want them. But just like crafters, there is a gear set you want to get to prepare for Shadowbringers. The Land King set should be very easy of an ask. For one, if you otherwise give up, custom deliveries are worth a ton of scripts. 300 plus from Zoe on bonus. I still recommend that you do this as a crafter instead since crafter scripts are harder to get, but this is an entire gear piece per turn in. Secondly, even in bad gear, farming up a ton of collectibles to turn in should be super easy. Even if the first few batches are weak and with few scripts, after getting a piece or two of the Land King gear, the progress you see is near exponential and you start getting way more scripts way faster. 
You'll want to have both Miner and Botanist at level 70 for when you do this, and you don't have to worry about overleveling or anything like that, as if that would be a problem, because turn-ins drop to near nothing for EXP because it expects you to go do Shadowbringers collectibles instead. But yeah, that's it. This was a much, much smoother run than Heavensward, huh? Takes a fraction of the time and much easier to obtain gear for the future. A future marked with more battles. We need to do a bit of that to complete 4.1 and unlock a few of our features. 4.1 is just the beginning. It's time for you to get back to work. Garlemald doesn't sleep, and the counterattack is not far off. But the counterattack is the least of your worries, for soon everything shall come to pass. Thank you for watching this episode of Final Fantasy XIV, your first day. It's almost a shock of how far we've come already, and yet we have so much further to go. Many more unlocks, notable, and repeats of the past. The emotion will reach a fever pitch, as will the fights we go through. We're coming up to the end, and I hope you enjoy the end when it arrives. The game wants you to have fun after all. But take care, and may the power of animated hogs lay waste to your enemies. And the usual extra thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon, and an extra, extra special thanks to Arya Deva, Amen Al Khatib, Benjamin Han, Body Clock, Ethan, Ethan Olson, Evan, Jamie Cutterell, Kyle Steinhauser, Meowfi, and Valor LLC. If you'd like to become a patron or join the Discord or anything like that, the links are down below. Thank you for watching.